In this video, we're going to replace this factory radio with a Pioneer touchscreen. And we start by removing the factory radio. In order to do this, you start with the air conditioning vents. On this particular model of car, the air conditioning vents pop out. And with those vents out, it gives you access to four screws that are holding the radio in the dash. Those four screws mount right here to the factory radio on these tabs right here. They're a little bit hard to get to, and I wasn't able to get that process on film. Once you get those screws out, you gotta pry the factory panel off. There are some little indentions right here. That put up quite a fight, and I wasn't able to get it on film, but you just pull it up from the bottom and it eventually comes out. And at that point, there are several factory components that are attached to the panel, such as the radio, the hazard switch, and the HVAC controls. So it's off to the workbench to take those off. Now, the first thing I did was pull the factory radio off. That was not necessary, but it made it a lot easier to work on this panel with the radio removed. So in this shot, I'm pulling off the factory HVAC controls. They're screwed down with four screws. This little piece right here that held the hazard light in, it put up quite a fight after removing it from the factory panel. There were four clips that had to be released. These were in there pretty tight. I used a screwdriver to get them out. Connecting the HVAC controls to the aftermarket kit was an absolute breeze. It's just four screws and that turned out absolutely perfect. But once again, the stupid hazard switch put up quite a fight. It wasn't really clear from the instructions what way the hazard switch went in. The aftermarket kit had a clip that you pop the switch into, and then that clip bolts onto the dash kit. I probably spent 20 or 30 minutes just trying different angles, trying to figure out how this went together. This kit can either be used with a double DIN or a single DIN head unit. So what you have to do is cut this piece out of the center. I just took some of my wire cutters and cut those loose, and then with a Dremel and a knife, just kind of trimmed it flush. Now to get the radio itself into the dash kit. In order to do that, the dash kit comes with this pair of wings and these wings just kind of sit in these little notches. They don't clip in or snap in or pop in. So I guess it's just the pressure from the radio that holds these in place. You can't really put them in wrong. There's only one way they go. So the radio itself just slides in from the front and then screws into those wings. It again was a pretty straightforward process, but it did take a couple of tries to get everything lined up so that it looked nice. Moving on to the wire harness. Now the wire harness can be pretty intimidating. And people who are old like me will tell you that way back in the day that the wire harness was a lot easier to do. But that's not entirely true because back in the day we didn't have the internet and we couldn't jump on YouTube and see a video on how to wire up one of these harnesses. There are a ton of videos showing the process of wiring a harness, so I'm not gonna bore you with a lot of details. I will show you a couple of things that are extremely important when you're wiring up the harness. Now, for the most part, it's just a matter of matching up the colors, red to red, black to black, yellow to yellow, and the same thing with the speaker wires. Now, that's not 100% true. You will have to dig out the manual for both your wire harness and for your radio to make sure you've got everything matched up correct. There are three things that add to the complexity. Most modern cars are gonna have steering wheel controls and you do want to retain those steering wheel controls. If your car doesn't have a backup camera, you're gonna to wanna to add one while you're doing all this work. We're gonna add one on this car. You'll see that in a little bit. And then because these touchscreen radios can be a really big distraction, they're all designed to connect to the parking brake. So you have to have the car stopped with the parking brake engaged in order to go into the settings or watch a movie on them. And of course, people have found a workaround for that in the form of a parking brake bypass. You can see right here in the harness, I'm wiring up my parking brake bypass. This bypass right here has three connections. It has to have a trigger and it's going to use the blue wire, which we typically use for the amplifier turn on lead. It has to have a ground, which is the black wire. And then you've got to actually connect it to the radio's parking brake wire. Now that gets complicated because I am going to be running an aftermarket amplifier. So I'll need a way to connect another wire to that blue turn on lead. And there are several different components that need to attach to the ground wire. So the complicated bit of this wiring harness is having multiple connections for the blue amp turn on lead, the black ground wire, and the red ignition wire. 
And what I like to do is just lay it all out on the bench and go ahead and just twist all the wires together before I start soldering everything up. That way I can make sure everything is connected where it's supposed to be. And the next big tip I wanna give you before you start soldering up your wires is to go ahead and slide some shrink wrap on before you solder the wires and then double and triple check that it's there. It's hard enough to make this wad of wires look neat and clean behind the dash as it is. And if you gotta cut it back open to add shrink wrap later, that just makes things worse. For some radios like this Pioneer right here, the steering wheel controls plugs into the back of the radio using what looks like a headphone jack. And that then plugs into one of these modules. And the trick here is to open up the manual for the module and look up the car you're using and the radio you're using and make sure the proper pin switches have been tripped. It's always a good idea to cover these switches up with some tape, that way you don't accidentally trip the switches when you're installing the radio. I picked up this cordless heat gun from Harbor Freight. I already had one of their drills, and so I thought I'd give their heat gun a try. I try to switch over to cordless tools whenever possible because I'm always fighting with extension cords. I definitely don't recommend this particular cordless heat gun. I don't know if all cordless heat guns are duds or not. If you have experience with one that works well, tell us about it down in the comments. Now some of these Kias and Hyundais use a large double harness like this one right here. And some of them don't. This one is one that doesn't. It breaks the harness into two different parts, which I like because it makes it a little bit easier to wire everything up. This part of the harness here has the power, the turn-on leads, the grounds, the illumination wire, the parking brake wire. And this one over here has all the speaker wires. For this install, I'm gonna be using an aftermarket four channel amplifier. So I'm not gonna connect the speaker wires into the harness at this time. What I'm gonna do instead is take the speaker wire harness over to the car and then connect these up to the nine wire that I've run from the back of the car up to the front. In order to do this, I'm gonna to have to actually solder in the car. And before I solder those connections, I'm gonna be sure to put shrink wrap on all of them and put down an old t-shirt or a rag or a towel or something so that when I inevitably drop solder, I won't damage the interior of the car. Now I am connecting a backup camera. The way most backup cameras work is there is a yellow RCA connector and that is the video connector for the backup camera. And then there is a red power wire. That red power wire has to be connected to some source that turns on when you put the car in reverse. That red power wire is going to power the camera on and it's going to tell the radio that the backup camera is on. What I like to do is connect that wire in the back of the car. I'll show you that in just a minute. Then I like to run that wire through the car and crimp on some connectors so that I can easily disconnect that behind the dash if I ever need to pull the radio out. Things don't always go as planned. Sometimes you do have to pull the radio back out. So anything you can do at this point to make it easier to come in and fix the radio later is always a good idea. And hey, while I'm working on all that, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons right over here these are my ten dollar patrons and i want to give a shout out to my 25 dollar patrons dylan Bo, baba speaker lab llc bam bam and david t for the backup camera i'm using one of these that mounts to the license plate and it turned out to be pretty easy to get it into the trunk there's this little trim panel right above the license plate that just pops off there's four bolts holding it in and then a few clips and after it pops off, you have access to this grommet right here. I just poked a hole in the grommet and ran all the wires through the grommet. Then it's just a matter of reinstalling that cover and you've got a nice, neat, clean look. What most people do with their backup cameras is they just find the bulb that turns on when you put the car in reverse, the backup lights, and then tap into the positive wire on that bulb. Now this camera has two positive wires, a red one and I believe a green one. You can see it in the video there. The positive wire here on the light bulb is the white wire. We just peel back the insulation and insert our positive wires, solder it together, tape it up, and we're off and run would we'll do the same thing on the negative side. And then from there, I just ran that wire along the side of the car, right along the power wire that I used for the amplifier. This is one of those things, if you're gonna install amplifiers and backup cameras and all this stuff, it's always best to assemble all the equipment and do it all at once so you're not taking the car back apart to add more stuff later. From there, you just run the wire underneath the dash up into where the radio is, securing it with zip ties every chance you get. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a DIYer. I don't work in a shop, and that means that I'm always crunched for time 
time because I can only do this on the weekends when I can take the car out of service. So this car had to get somebody to work the next day. And so I set the camera aside and just started working on getting everything run up to the dash and getting the radio in the dash. And that is where I ran into a little bit of a problem. For some reason, I have no idea why the Bluetooth microphone was not working. I think it might be a bad microphone and I'm gonna go ahead and order one to replace it. I did the obvious thing first where I unplugged the microphone and made sure I had it plugged into the right spot. And then for some reason, I wasn't getting any sound out of the rear channel of the RCAs. If any of you have any experience with these Pioneer radios, it's an AVH1550NEX. This particular model actually is discontinued, but I'll make sure to give you a link down below to the newest model. If any of you have run into trouble with the rear RCAs, give me a shout, let me know what you did to fix that. Maybe there's some setting inside the radio that I've got to switch. Now, I'm not sure if it's the RCAs or if it's the radio itself. I was able to confirm that my speaker wire connections are all just fine. The amplifier that I'm using has this two slash four channel switch on it. In two channel mode, it takes the signal from the front and routes it to the back. And I was able to get sound out of all four corners, no problem. So in order to fix those two things, I am gonna have to take the radio out of the dash and disconnect everything and do some troubleshooting. If you wanna see that as well as the video where I install the speakers in the doors, make sure that you hit this subscribe button right here and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the video. In the meantime, right here is another cool video for you to watch. I'm Justin, the DIY audio guy, and I will see you on the next adventure.